What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert and today I wanted to go over a different type of workflow that we can use when doing sample replacement or enhancement within Studio One. So we all know that we have the Melodyne tool that we can use, so I could right click this event right now and in my audio menu I could go ahead and edit with Melodyne and then when I'm in Melodyne I could use the percussive algorithm within Melodyne to generate some MIDI triggers. Okay, so this works just as it should, but the only issue I have with that particular workflow is that I find I have to do a lot of work ahead of time on the actual track that I'm working with before I send it over. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, if I'm dealing with any areas where there's bleed, so let's have a look at this area in particular, I have to be very careful in terms of what I send over because otherwise I'm gonna be getting some false triggers that are generated. Now, if it's a really clean track, uh, it's not too big of an issue, but needless to say, I always end up having to do either strip silence or if I have the time and budget, I will actually manually go through the entire track and I will edit out anything that doesn't belong. So I would, you know, do something like that, get rid of it and, you know, and then I would go ahead and I would consolidate the entire track into a contiguous event and I would then send that event over. Okay, so now let's back up here and let's talk about a different type of workflow that we can use. Okay, so the workflow that I'm going to be talking about today is specifically using the groove clipboard that we have within Studio One to generate these same MIDI triggers. And in order for the groove clipboard to really do its job well, we're going to be using another feature too, which is detect transients. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're gonna to go to our audio bend menu. Now we've also got some shortcuts here to detect transients. Here it's in my recent items, but if it wasn't, uh, I could go to audio and under audio bend, we can do detect transients. Or you'll see here, we've actually got a shortcut that we can use as well. So in this particular case, I'm gonna select this event. My audio bend menu is open and this is set to standard. We're gonna go ahead and analyze this. Okay, so it's gone ahead, it's done its thing, and it's analyzed it. Let's have a look to see how it did. And in general, what we're looking for here is to make sure that we don't have any false triggers. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up a bit. Okay, so that looks like it's done a really good job. So what I can do here is just visually, I can hold down the shift key and use my scroll wheel. And I'm looking for stuff like this. So I can tell you right now that this definitely isn't a kick drum hit. That's bleed of some sort. Let's have a listen to it. Okay, so we've got a couple different options here. I can go to my audio bend tool and I can actually select this and then I could delete it. But, you know, probably a better option would be to just lower my threshold here. So let's lower the threshold and it, you know, okay, so it just disappeared. So now what I would do is I'm just gonna scroll through and again, I'm just looking visually to see all these transients and make sure that I don't have anything that looks like a false trigger. So if there's anything I'm not sure about, like for instance, this one over here, I'll have a quick listen. Okay, so that's just a slightly different sounding kick drum, so it looks a little different, but it still has the right trigger. Okay, so this looks like in general it's gonna be pretty good right across the board. And I could have a listen to any area, just to double check. Okay, so that looks like it's gonna work perfectly fine. Maybe we can listen to this one. Okay, anyways, that looks great. Perfect. So the next step that we have here is I'm gonna hop into my quantize menu. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna click this event here and I can just drag this right in. Okay, so now all of these points here you see, all of these now represent a MIDI trigger. Now for the next step here, we're gonna have a look at how we can use this information. So if we actually hover our cursor over top here, you'll notice that we have this hand tool. And as you might have guessed, yes, we can actually grab this and we can actually drag this down. So now this has gone ahead and it's created a MIDI event which has all these triggers which were generated by the transient detection which generated bend markers. So essentially, this now represents our entire kick drum track. Okay, so what we can do now is we can go ahead and open up our instruments folder and I'm just gonna grab a basic kit here. We're not gonna go too fancy and I can drag that in. And now I need to go ahead and make sure that all of these MIDI triggers here are mapped out to the proper pitch. So in this case, C1 is the pitch I wanna use. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm gonna double click this event. 
I'm going to do a command A to select everything here, and you'll notice that it's currently set to C3. So I can use my shortcuts shift and down arrow. That brings it down one octave. That brings it down another octave. If I hold down just the up arrow or down arrow, I'm moving in one pitch at a time. So in this particular case, I want to be to C1. Now, if you'd rather see the names of the drums here, you can click this icon, click this wrench icon, load the general mini drums preset, click OK, and now we can see the actual names. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. So now we at least know that our trigger is going to be triggering the right sound. Now, before we go ahead and just commit to this and print our audio and bounce it, let's have a really quick listen. We can zoom in a bit. Okay, so I can hear something right off the bat over here. I can hear that there's a little bit of a flam. So let's zoom in really close here. I'm going to just click within the top track, use my tab key to be tabbing through these detected transients, and you'll notice a bit of a pattern here is that our MIDI triggers are actually in line with the bend marker here. And this is because of the way that this particular algorithm works with bend markers in general in Studio One, and the way they preserve the front end transients of the information, that we have this slight offset here. So no problem at all. There's a way that we can deal with this. So what we'll do is let's just park our cursor on something, let's say over here. This one looks pretty good. And I'm gonna drop a marker in here. So now I've dropped the marker in here. So now what we need to do is we're going to do a global offset by nudging this entire event. And we're going to hope that we can kind of split the difference between all of these and get this MIDI trigger to be a little bit better in line with the actual front end of this transient here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to the very beginning and I have snapping on here and I'm going to go ahead and select this event and let's just bring it back to here. So this gives us a bit of breathing room because we actually have to nudge this region over to the left a bit earlier in time. So now I'm going to go shift N to go back to my marker over here. Now what I want to do is I want to zoom in a little bit and I want to place my pointer tool somewhere roughly around here here where the beginning of this is. So let's just go ahead and click this. And now I can just drag this back. And you notice here, okay, this is snapping right now. Let's go back to that same point again. I'm going to take snapping off for a second. And I want to try to drag this so it's more in line with this marker number two. Okay. And again, we're just ballparking things. So somewhere about, I can even just use my cursor. Okay, so I'm just, I've eyeballed this. Okay, now let's go back to that same marker again. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's start tabbing through these. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. It looks in general to be like they're pretty good. Okay, so let's just say that we're happy with that. Let's move back to the very beginning of this session here. I'm going to click this event and I'm going to drag this, snap this out. Because we want this to be a contiguous event that starts exactly at bar one. All right. So now that we have this done, the next step is I want to actually see the waveforms and I don't necessarily need to have this sitting as an instrument track. In fact, I'd rather not. So I've got two options. I can either bounce this to audio right now, or I can render this, transform it to rendered audio. Now, in this particular case, uh, I'm definitely going to use the transform to rendered audio option. So let's go ahead and do that. So transform to audio track, we want to preserve the instrument track state and support retransformation to instrument track. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now we have visual waveforms, but we still have this hybrid MIDI that's lying in the background. So, you know, I can go ahead, I can open this and edit this as audio, but at any given point in time, I can transform this back to MIDI. And the reason that this comes in really handy is let's say that I'm editing these you know, these waveforms and, or this audio, and I find a point, say, somewhere over here where there's a really loud one, where I really want the MIDI to represent that being a louder transient. So the beautiful thing about working with drum samples in MIDI is when you get to the higher samples that are coming up, you know, 100 or 127 on the max, the front end transient attack of a kick drum is very different than when it's just happening lightly. So rather than just making these actual audio events louder in terms of bringing up their event gain, I want to be able to give myself the freedom to go back underneath the hood and change the actual velocity of these MIDI triggers to either higher or lower so that I can get them to gel well with my original track.
Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's have a quick listen here. Going to zoom out. And in fact, I think I'll probably move to our marker over here. Let's bring this all the way down. And I'm going to start bringing this, dialing this up. Okay, going to mute that. Okay, so I think in general that that did a really, really good job. And then I can just zoom through and start, you know, having a look at these by tabbing through everything. And I just want to make sure that in general that they're sitting pretty good with each other. And they seem to look pretty good right now. Now, one of the main things that I'm concerning myself with is the phase coherency. So right now, even though some of these might seem like they're moving a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, in general, the phase coherency between these samples looks pretty good. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I would be more concerned with, let's just select this top event here, open our audio bend menu, take off these. If I was to take, uh, let's go to effects here, and if I was to take a mix tool, I'm going to drag this in as an audio event effect by holding down the uh, option key on a Mac. And let's go ahead, let's invert this phase, and let's go ahead and render this. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in again here. And now let's have a look as I tab through all of these over here. Now we can see that, you know, we have different phase coherency happening here. And I'm more concerned with something like this happening than with them being a little bit to the left or to the right. So excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Okay, so now that I have this done, uh, I would just go ahead and continue to mix my track but it's a very easy way to be able to generate MIDI triggers. And we can actually use the detect transients process kind of like a strip silence to detect the thresholds to make sure that we're only getting triggers for the things we want. In this particular case, I'm making sure that I got clean kick triggers. Then we used a kind of a global nudge or sliding offset to make sure that our waveforms are gonna be our phase coherency and our alignment looks pretty good. Anyway, so that's using the Groove Clipboard and Transient Detection to create MIDI triggers for sample replacement or sample enhancement when working with drums. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.